Hey, all, welcome to my shop. Um, so I recently learned that vehicle manufacturers set up cars to accommodate a driver between four foot eight and six foot two on average. Okay, that's an eighteen inch difference in the height of the driver. Now, a driver isn't going to call up the manufacturer or get online and ask, "Hey, where do I set my seat?" No, they've got to get in the car. They've got to adjust the seat, lift it up, drop it down, move it forward, move it back, so that it fits them, so that it's comfortable for them. You know, the same thing applies when it comes to an airplane. It doesn't matter what the manual says or, or what everybody says online. If you go on a forum and you go online and you ask questions, where do I set my CG? Where do I set uh, my expos at? How much throws do I have? You know, when you're done, you're going to have a plane that is set up for someone else. It may work for you, but it may not. And you may just hate that plane. And so what we're going to do over the next little while is talk about how to fine tune a plane to fit you and your flying style. And Make it so that you get the most out of your plane, so it's doing what you want it to instead of not doing what you wished it would. Because when it's not doing what you wished it would, it's not a fun day out. It's not a fun way to fly. It's, it's not an enjoyable experience. This video is the first of a series that's going to help you set up your plane to fit you and your flying style. Um, we're going to start at the basics, some of the basics. I'm going to give you an overview of all different kinds of things about flying, and that's what we're going to do today. So let's take a second to talk about flying surfaces. You have on your plane, you have your elevator, you have your rudder, and you have your ailerons. Look at this drawing, and you can see here, you have three different axes of flight. You have the yaw, which is controlled by your rudder. You have pitch, which is controlled by the elevator. And roll, which is controlled by the ailerons. All right, we're gonna talk about attitudes of flight. You have upright, you have inverted, you have knife edge, some of the other terms used in flying. If you're flying and you pull up to do a loop, this is inside, okay? Inside is towards the canopy, okay? Outside is away from the canopy, okay? It's pulling towards the gear. So the reason why the center of gravity is so important is the plane rotates on the center of gravity. Anything it does is going to be on or around the center of gravity. Whether it's a simple going on, uh, from an up, upright flying to an upline, it's going to rotate on the center of gravity. Okay? The tail is going to push down, the nose is going to pull up, airflow is going to go across, and it rotates on that center of gravity. That is where the three axes of flight meet. Okay? So moving, working off of the center of gravity, we can look at different things, like we can look at spin, okay? So when we're doing aerobatics, plane's flying down, that's nice. Plane's flying down, and it spins, okay? So a spin, you can do a gradual spin, okay, which is more scale-like. Where the plane, you can do a flat spin, where the plane rotates on its axis. Okay, inverted flat spin. Plane rotates on its axis. Uh, you can do a knife edge spin. Instead of forward flight, there's back forward flight. Like you can do a tail slide. Okay, so the plane will tail slide out and down. If you if you're using a, a scale plane, uh, a cub or something like this, they they'll be able to do a, a gradual spin. Sometimes they won't be able to do 
flat spins as a general rule. You, know, you can set up a plane to do anything. It doesn't mean that it's built to do that or can handle it. The other way that you can do aerobatics is upline. So you're going up, you're moving really quick, and you boom, and bust it in to a flat spin. So you go up, turn, and then put it in a flat spin. Okay? So you can do a pop top. A pop top is an upright flat spin or an inverted flat spin going on an upline. You can also sometimes do a knife edge spin going on an upline. Okay, these are all more advanced aerobatics. Okay, so let's talk about some more advanced ones. So now if you're doing aerobatics and say you want to do, um, we, we talked about the knife edge spin, right? So the knife edge spin going this way is rotating around the axis. Now we can do a knife edge spin. If you're flying flat and level, you turn it up and you rotate on the axis. Okay, so that is a Lomshevat. Lomshavok. Sometimes it's called a corkscrew in XA. Lomshavoks are a little more of the gradual spin where the corkscrew is more of a hard and heavy. If you're doing a blender, a blender is, so a downline spin is a blender rotating fast and going into a flat spin. We can do the same thing if we're flying, so we're flat and level. We can actually do in 3D in XA a pinwheel. Incredibly hard on your frame, but it does look pretty cool. And then we can get into 3D, which is my my preferred flying style. But so you have upright, inverted, knife edge, a rolling harrier. You can hover. When you hover, you're hanging on the prop, okay? The plane can torque roll. So different elevators. You can have an upright elevator, okay? Where it comes down this way, it can come this direction, it can come straight down if you've got wind, okay? Inverted elevator. An inverted comes down this direction, okay? A knife edge, sometimes they call it a death slide. Through, within 3D, you can do a rolling Harrier elevator, dropping the plane from high up to down low. Beautiful descent. There are maneuvers such as a wall, where you're flying along and you stop the plane. You can also do a parachute, where you're coming down and you pull it in. Here's a great video of a, an insane XA parachute. So 3D, uh, if you go back 20 years ago, uh, 3D started coming out and it was low and slow. So you took these larger, heavier planes, uh, smaller flying surfaces, and you were making them do what couldn't be done. 25 years ago, hovering was a holy crap thing. That was just incredible. A torque roll was next level. Okay, and, then we and then we brought in the uh, Harriers and rolling Harriers and all these type things. And so what it was is you moved from flying off of the wing to flying off of the prop. Now time has passed and, and a lot of things have happened. Planes have gotten to be so much different in design. So you went from a full wooden frame like this to a carbon reinforced balsa frame like something you see in this picture. The difference between the two is amazing, okay? So planes got lighter, they got stronger, they were able to fly faster, bigger surfaces. So over the next little bit, we're gonna, going to discuss everything from takeoff to tumbles. Uh, I've always said, Pretty much any plane will take off once. Getting it to do it twice is always nice. It's easier on the pocketbook, that's for sure. I think anybody who's flown long enough has lost a plane in a very early stage where they just didn't even get a chance to know the plane, and that, that's a bummer. Sometimes it's the first flight. Sometimes it's the first seconds of their first flight. 
things happen. Setting up a plane correctly and knowing it's set up correctly, we can avoid some of those mistakes. We can avoid some of those problems. Join me next time where we're going to start discussing how to dial your plane in, how to set it up correctly, uh, different elements of stability versus maneuverability, how to get your CG dialed in, and how to get your plane to fit your flying. Till next time, happy landings.